Hello there and welcome. This is Ava from Soul GPS. Today we have part seven of our series, how manipulators abuse other people with words. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the put downs and criticisms that are often actually accompanied by self aggrandizing comments, meaning you're bad, they're good. They have a way of turning around the situation so that no matter what happens, they always come out on top and as the winners and you either lose or on top of it, you can be also shamed for standing up for yourself, asking for what you need and so on and so forth. Really, really damaging tactic, verbal tactic specifically, uh, you know, meant to meant to, and we're going to dive into this here, but um, the net net is basically to make you feel so bad about yourself that you're terrified about what happens when you leave. It, it's, it's a form of like an, an, a, it's a form of imprisonment is to keep you in the relationship because you feel so bad about yourself. And this person has taken over your self-worth to the degree where the idea of leaving and being on your own and away from them, away from your source of <clears throat> your own source of um, approval really is uh, is just absolutely terrifying and and I encounter this very very often in the work that I do with my clients who are so deeply entrapped in relationships with abusers that the thing that keeps them from leaving is tremendous fear of loneliness so we're going to go into that here um, but first you know, let's, let's look a little bit deeper about what those comments are and what do they, do they, do they mean to do on, on a very deep level. And what they mean to do is to instill within you a belief that you're absolutely worthless without that person. It's very common and it's extremely damaging and it can take a while to heal from this. Um, it takes a lot of self-observation, uh, watching the inner criticism, um, it, it, it can take inner, inner child work. Um, it can take especially really spying your inner dialogue and observing how you speak to yourself, because that is ultimately the thing that is ultimate, ultimately responsible for your moment to moment emotional state. So, but here, what we need to really look at, and, and that can be difficult for some people is that it is really within our power whether we want to give these people the power over our self-worth by putting our self-worth into their hands, we are enabling them in essence to manipulate us with their words, with emotions, you know, the variety of tactics. This, this whole series is meant to um, you know, cover a wide spectrum of, of, of those things. So, so, so what's really crucial here is to really pause and ask yourself honestly, whether this is something that you have been doing. And if that is the case, then there's some work that you'll need to do on yourself and it doesn't have to take forever. It doesn't have to take years. It just needs to, you know, take some concentrated time of really showing up for yourself and really figuring out why you do that and doing a variety of practices that I uh, share with my clients in my sessions, uh, depending on what it is that they need at the time to help them reverse that trend. So, so what, what narcissists, um, especially, and you know, all kinds of the, all, the whole, all, the whole spectrum of characters on the, in the cluster B, um, category, what they, what they tend to do is, you know, they tend to put you down and so that you feel like you will never amount to anything. And, um, and parents do that too, a lot, you know, and, and that now we're looking at years and years of training that can be really difficult to unlearn. And, and that really sets the stage for then repeating that dynamic later on. But, um, but what they really want you to know and believe is that nobody will ever uh, value you, value you in quotation marks or love you the way that they love you. So it's a form of bonding, right? And it, and it, and becomes especially effective if you have arrived with your partner at the stage of us against the world, which is a fascinating concept and can happen fairly quickly. Um, because for, you know, a lot of people who have, who are struggling with codependency, who are struggling with low self-worth, 
life can be pretty challenging and finding people who really resonate with us and people who really can really see us and understand us can be tough. So narcissists sniff out that vulnerability. And so when they connect with us, they, they feel, we, we feel from them like, oh my God, we just found the person who can really hear us, right? It's a tactic. It's a trick. It's not real. Getting to know someone can take, it takes a while. So if it happens very quickly, um, the reason why they do it is they, because they want to isolate you from other people. So they can't give you a reality check verification and they will endeavor to make you believe that they are the only people who can, who really get who they are. And that gives them, uh, who, who get who you are. And that gives them full access to your soul ultimately, because you're opening yourself up mentally, physically, emotionally, and always, and they can just, they just go through these boundaries. They just, they just bulldoze through them, whatever, whatever there is in the beginning. Cause oftentimes, um, you know, people who get into these relationships may have weak boundaries. So they bulldoze right through it and they will create this deep, deep connection, which is based on illusion, unfortunately, why it's so painful to then come out of these relationships and be like, oh my God, it was all a lie, right? Um, and it was a lie to a degree because there's also this whole topic of the fact that narcissists actually really do think that they have found you know, they're, they're looking for their soulmate too. And you are only good for them as long as you're fitting the image of perfection that they have of what their perfect partner is going to look at because they're obsessed with that, you know, and then if you, for some reason fail, you don't do what they're expecting you to do, or you're too demanding or this and that they're going to, the, the devaluation will begin. So that's, that's a slightly different topic. But what I, um, what I really want to emphasize here is that, you know, this, this, us against the world. I'm the only one who understands you. No one will ever love you the way I do. No one will ever see you the way I do. It serves a very specific purpose. And the purpose is to make you so bound to them that you are absolutely terrified of leaving. So even while they're out there doing their thing and usually, you know, towards the later stages of these relationships, they don't even hide. They're not even that good at hiding some of the things that they do, whether it's multiple relationships, you know, living double, triple, quadruple lives, or, you know, their lives become much more see-through. And so you're catching up with it, but because deep inside your sen uh, sense of self-worth is so low, you can't imagine your life without them. That's really the most, I think, damaging uh, effect of being subjected to so much criticism over time. And, um, and, 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 and also, often it also, these criticisms are accompanied by covert blame. So again, self-aggrandization, I am all that, you are nothing, and you've done this, this, and that. You know, they never take any responsibility, so it's always your fault. And it, it, it typically starts um, subtle, in a subtle way, you know, kind of like, you know, did you put on a few pounds? You, you still look cute, but, you know, like things like that, or, you know, um, let's say that you didn't get the promotion that you were seeking at work and you know they're going to be bringing that up and somehow shaming you about it you know that maybe you were not as talented as they thought that you were you know or or that you're not making enough money or that you're not driving the right car or you know like that they'll still like you but they wish there was this right it's like initially it's like uh, it's not blatant and and straight up but it's more more like insinuation so you kind of can read between the lines. It's extremely painful and you feel in your gut, you know, it doesn't have to be again, a very specific thing, very direct thing. It can be disguised, but it's, it doesn't make it any less painful. Uh, so why do they do this? Um, again, they do this because they want to make it harder for you to leave the relationship. Um, it creates within you a deep sense of like a terrifying fear of the future. Because if you feel, again, your self-worth is so damaged, then you can't even imagine ever finding um, somebody else who's going to value you or love you. Uh, you can't imagine having a good time, like, because it's all associated with the narcissist. Like, they're the only ones. It's almost like we're giving them a free pass. Like, their own, that, that life can be good only as long as we're with them. Or, or life can be is terrible when we're with them. But when we're on our own, it's going to be even worse. So really... 
check in with yourself, ask yourself, is this something that, that you feel? And if so, I'm going to give you a few things, a few pointers as to the areas that you want to um, focus on in your self-healing. So what else? It creates a, a deep sense of loneliness and disconnection within yourself. So again, this, this divide and conquer strategy is to put you against yourself, make their, their voice go inside you. It's kind of like it gets encoded in there. So you always feel like you're failing. You always feel like you can never do anything right because it's their voice now that's, that's, that's hijacked your, um, your programming. And it's ultimately it's a control tactic. It's 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 very deeply manipulative. Um, it's it seeps into the sub subconscious and it keeps on scratching on that old wound of of low self worth, which is what most people who have the codependency uh, tendencies, most people who get into these relationships, they ha that's the wound and that's the blessing. Again, it's 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 a gift. The gift is that. These kinds of relationships really illuminate the core of the problem in us and allows us, gives us the ability to really finally heal and, uh, and change our life. So I want to mention here that actually there's somebody I knew back in the day who now in hindsight from perspective was, was a pretty narcissistic person. And he told me um, at the time, and I kind of ignored it, but I should have, I should have listened. He told me this. He said, you know, like these days, what, what guys do to keep their girls around is they will criticize them and they will tell them how, that they're too fat or too ugly or too stupid or too whatever in, in a, in an insinuating kind of way so that they feel insecure and they're much less likely to leave them. And he told me that they will do that even if that wasn't true. And especially if it wasn't true, especially if they really wanted the girl to stay with them because she was really beautiful and she was smart and intelligent and they were afraid of other men out there stealing her from them. So they, they I mean, interesting, huh? That's, that's what, uh, that's what young guys would do. <laughs> um, a word on loneliness, because th that seems to be the, one of the most one of the biggest fears that people feel again when it comes to making the the cut and and leaving um, an abusive relationship know that this is an inner state this is this has really very little to do with the outside world think about it think about when you are in love or think about when you're surrounded you have great friendships let's say and then you happen to be alone in a house for some time because you need to do something got to take care of things whatever you don't feel lonely because you feel you're connected with other people. You're connected with them because you're able to be vulnerably open and, and, um, you know, and you, and you feel like you feel a sense of warmth coming from them. So there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. And there is a period of time, especially after leaving an abusive relationship, when we will spend more time alone um, by default, because now that person is not going to be there and, and that it will create a vacuum. That doesn't mean that you can't spend time with your friends or go out there and meet new people. But um, usually, you know, our emotions are in a state where it feels a little bit safer to hibernate, to be in our own space, to allow ourselves to, you know, go through the emotional healing that we do. So just be prepared that that is going to be um, for some time, but it will pass. And it will get better as your inner dialogue gets better because I would say that, that the thing that influence, that makes us so lonely, feel so lonely and makes us so afraid of loneliness is that when, when all of the stimulations and distractions leave us, we are left with our own mind and listening to our own mind. And if we're hearing those awful criticisms that we remember from the relationship, we're going to feel really bad. So that is the area to work on. And here, just real quick, I want to leave you with some examples of these subtle put downs. Um, for instance, women will, will tell men that they will, um, that they're losers without them on their side. <clears throat> I've witnessed that quite a bit among some of the people that I know who are somatic narcissists, female somatic narcissists who are, you know, they're, they're the trophy girlfriends or trof trophy wives. And it's, you know, even though they're very emotionally d dis dis uh, destructive to the men that they're with, the men are afraid that without that woman on their side, um, you know, they're going to be perceived as far less. So that, and that is absolutely not the case. I would say that, um, healthy, 
um, solid women have a lot of respect for men who are able to be single and, and really dig their single dumb and, and work on themselves. So there's no shame in that. Women who have um, malignant form of uh, borderline personality disorder will shame their partners, their, their male partners, um, more on the ca character side. For instance, that, you know, how can you be so heartless and leave me? You, um, you know, you're just, you know, they will attack the character. The person wants to be good and wants to do good, they're going to attack that and they're going to make them feel like, you know, they're just, they're just awful people. And in general, again, from work from my clients, like these people are so far from being bad or awful or selfish. It's like by miles. So it is, again, it's, it's a manipulative tactic. Um, for men, oftentimes what they do is they use body shaming. Like I'd mentioned earlier, you know, they tell them that they're, you know, ugly or fat or old or whatever. Um, and that they will never amount to anything without them. And again, this is to make them feel like nobody's ever going to love them. And in the event of, uh, say, that when they're coming back and hoovering, hoovering you, um, what they may do is, you know, just play the, the caring game, uh, the, the caring uh, card of, you know, I just want to check, uh, check up on you, see how you're feeling. And then if they're not going to... Um, get their expectations met of how the interaction goes, you know, say you're unresponsive or you have boundaries or you say no or whatever. And they may tell, tell you, you know, that you're, you're being ungrateful and, and cooperative, uncooperative and they wish that they haven't, um, you know, they have, they wish that they haven't contacted you, you know, again, more shaming. It's more about a game to win. You know, they want to walk away feeling like, they had the last word and they leave you crying and in a pile of tears because narcissists cannot stand the idea of you being happy um, without them, you know, of you having a, a beautiful life without them. And that is as many of the uh, coaches out there on YouTube say, that really is the best um, revenge strategy for yourself is to really work on yourself and enjoy your life and, and, and build on that. So, so if you recognize, um, whether you're in a relationship, you're still right now at the moment, or if you have just recently left, or if you're doing, you know, your self healing work, looking back at your past and you can remember those, those instances, um, you know, know that this is a manipulative tactic. Don't fall for it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with you. There's, you know, it's like if somebody wants to leave a relationship, they don't have to like, destroy the person in the process, right? Or they don't have to use tactics. Like there's another one that oftentimes parents will use <clears throat> towards their, their kids, narcissistic parents. It's called uh, couching. And it's like, it's a criticism that's disguised in, in something really sweet, like, like a concern. Like, I'm really worried about you. You know, you're doing this and that. And I'm just, I'm just worried that you're making the wrong decisions. A lot of enmeshing parents will do that. So just keep that in mind. And also in healthy relationships, um, you know, just to burst the bubble even further, if you're still wondering, you know, maybe it's me, maybe I'm doing something. People don't change their feelings so radically. You know, one day they love you, they tell you you're, all, you're the best thing that happened to them and you're their soulmate. And the next day they're going to tell you that you are just, you're fat and ugly and you don't amount to anything. I'm sorry, but that just, that's not okay. That's not normal. That doesn't happen. So, um, and, and so lastly, before, before we wrap up, is, I want to mention that to, to cure from this, to set yourself on the right path, what you really want to work on is upgrading your sense of self-worth and self-esteem. You need to realize that you do have inherent self-worth by the, by the very virtue that you're here. You have worth, you have purpose, you have a mission on earth. You, you were brought here for something and it's now your job to discover what that is. Do not put up with people who are putting you down <clears throat> in order to make themselves feel better. Uh, excise them out of your life. They're toxic. They will never amount to anything good. They will never amount to anything good in your life. So uh, make sure that you do a proper cleanse. Um, if you have any kind of uh, remorse after that, or if you feel bad, know that that's normal, it will pass. Um, but you take your energy and instead of thinking about them, and what you have lost, think about what you have gained. You've gained time, you gained space and the ability to really, truly work on yourself. So, and there's my favorite one, lower your tolerance to mistreatment and abuse, lower your to tolerance for bad behavior. Instead of raising it and being more open, no, put those boundaries in place and say no. All right. Thank you so much for your attention here. Um, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe um, to my channel. 
lots of videos coming up on healing from narcissistic abuse and also I'm going to be setting sail soon again and traveling some more so I'm going to be bringing you videos from all corners of the world and um, and yeah so I wish you all the best sending you my love and I will see you in uh, video number eight take care